he went to his property. Well, damn good, too. But you can't be any geek off the street. You gotta be handy with the steel, if you know what I mean. Earn your keep. Regulators! Mount up. On a cool, clear night, typical to Southern California, Warren G. travels through his neighborhood, searching for women with whom he may initiate sexual intercourse. He has chosen to gauge in this pursuit alone. Nate Dog, having just arrived in Long Beach, seeks Warren. On his way to find Warren, Nate passes a car full of women who are excited to see him. Regardless, he insists to the women that there's no cause for excitement. Warren makes a left turn on 21st Street and Lewis Avenue, where he sees a group of young men enjoying a game of dice together. He parks his car and greets them. He's excited to find people to play with, but to his chagrin he discovers they intend to relieve him of his material possessions. Once the hopeful robbers reveal their firearms, Warren realizes he is in a less than favorable predicament. Meanwhile, Nate passes the women. As they are low on his own list of priorities, his primary concern is locating Warren. After curtly casting away the strumpets, whose interest in Nate was such that they crashed their automobile, he serendipitously stumbles upon his friend Warren G being held up by the young miscreants. Warren, unaware that Nate is serendipitously observing the scene unfold, is in disbelief that he's being robbed. The perpetrators have taken jewelry and a name brand designer watch from Warren. He is so incredulous that he asks what else the robbers intend to steal. This is most likely a rhetorical question. Observing these unfortunate proceedings, Nate realizes that he may have to use a firearm to deliver his friend from harm. The tension crescendos as the robbers point their guns to Warren's head. Warren senses the gravity of the situation. He could not believe the events unfolding could happen in his own neighborhood. As he imagines himself in a fantastical escape, he catches a glimpse of his friend Nate. Nate has 17 cartridges to expend, 16 residing in the pistol's magazine with a solitary round placed in the chamber and ready to be fired on the group of robbers. And he uses many of them. Afterward, he generously shares the credit for neutralizing the situation with Warren, though it is clear that Nate did all the difficult work. Putting congratulations aside, Nate quickly reminds himself that he has committed multiple homicides to save Warren, before letting his friend know that there are females nearby if he wishes to fornicate with them. Warren recalls that it was the promise of population that coxed him away from his previous activities, and is thankful that Nate knows a way to satisfy these urges. Nate quickly finds the women who are earlier crashed their car in Nate's account. He remarks to one that he is fond of her physical appearance. The woman, impressed by Nate's singing ability, asks that he and Warren allow her and her friends to share transportation. Soon both friends are driving with automobiles full of women to the East Side Motel, presumably to consummate the flirtation in an orgy. The third first is more expository, with Warren and Nate explaining the G-Funk musical style. Nate displays his bravado by claiming the individuals with equivalent knowledge could not even attempt to approach his level of lyrical mastery. He also notes that if any third party smokes as he does, they would find themselves in a state of intoxication daily. From Nate's other works, it can be inferred that the substance referenced is marijuana. Nate concludes his delineation of the night by issuing a vague threat to busters, suggesting that he and Warren G will further regulate any potential incidents in the future. Presumably by, the, engaging their, presumably by engaging their enemies with small firearms.